Welcome to the Leaders' Room, brought to you by the Eclif Leadership and Governance Center. Ping Fu is a Chinese-American entrepreneur. As a child, she was brutally taken away from her family and was also subsequently raped by the age of 10. From all that, she went on to become the co-founder of Geomagic, a 3D software development company, and was also its CEO until February of 2013. She was named the CEO of the year in the year 2005 by Inc. Magazine. Welcome, Ping Fu. Ping Fu, um, the one thing that I am really struck by your story is this. Um, you went through a very traumatizing experience when you were about 10 years old as a child, where you became um, the victim of a rape um, very early on in your life. How did you manage to overcome that rather painful experience in your life? Yeah, that actually took a long time. Um, but there are a few things when I look back mm -hmm. that's interesting. The first thing that I recognized was when I was at 10, I didn't even understand rape. Right. And it was the, I just thought I was badly beaten or hurt. Mm -hmm. and, and it was the emotional trauma that came after. It was the shaming um, imposed on me that left a life, lifelong scar on me. Mm -hmm. And for very many years, I try to hide that shame, even though um, I, I gone through my life being successful, that shame has been staying with me for mm -hmm. a very long time. And it was when I got in contact with Dr. Renee Brown's work, right. uh, shaming is about you're wrong, guilt is about you did something wrong. Mm -hmm. That wake me up to think, no, I'm not wrong, I need to do something with it. Right. And writing my book, Ban or Break, was one of my way to confront that fear. And mm -hmm. the fear is about the shame. Right. So this, this was one thing I recognized. And when I was young, when this happened, there's a second thing that was interesting. Mm -hmm. That is, I was always taught to be strong. Right. And then when rape happened and when that shame was imposed on me, mm -hmm. I couldn't be strong anymore. I was broken at that point. And when I was broken, I saw more kindness being showered over me. And I realized being vulnerable right. isn't necessarily a weakness. Is it necessarily a bad thing? It isn't, yeah. And was there anybody in particular uh, who you relied on to help you overcome that part of your life? Yes, I had an uncle who came mm -hmm. into my life when I mm -hmm. was 14. Mm -hmm. And he was the one told me what rape is about, and right. it wasn't my fault. Mm. And he was also the one taught me that to believe mm. I am precious rather than right. I am nobody. Mm. He brought me Western literatures, which was forbidden at the time, yes. so that I understood that there was a different world out there than mm. the, the life that I lived. It sounds like you have become a stronger person after having gone through that rather traumatizing experience. Is that correct for me to say? I would say, yes, it's like Nietzsche said, what doesn't break you makes you stronger. <laughs> That's right. How has that been helpful to you in, in, your, in your adult years, especially when you are leading a very high-performing team in, in becoming a su successful entrepreneur that you are now? Um, there are two things that I think that helped me. One is about um, resilience. Mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. about uh, not, not fail, but fail gracefully. Right. It's about understanding that you can, um, understanding that everybody's broken mm. sometimes in your life. That's and when right. you put yourself together, mm. you're different, but it is through those cracks that your authenticity shines. Mm. So that was one of the recognition is mm. that you do not need to be per perfect Correct. To, to succeed in mm. your life. And the, th the second thing that I, that I learned from that experience is about, is about vulnerability as a strength, not mm. necessarily the weakness. Mm. And it's about not only that you need to love and, and, and give love, but you need to receive love well. Right. You were growing up in a very happy uh, family when you were a child and then taken away from that environment. And from hero, you were zero and you were beaten up, you were told that you were worse than the dirt that you were lying on. Um, I, I can't help but try to imagine, how would that impact you as a leader, leading a team of highly successful people? 
I think that experience, I think the early eight years mm. were the love and then a hap happy family is instilled in me was Correct. very important. Mm. And then going through the atrocity of being nobody and also going through the life experience of not having the right knowledge mm -hmm. makes me feel all the time vulnerable in some ways, yes. all the time of not knowing. Sometimes mm. I feel like I'm really dumb because mm. everybody knows what they're talking about, I don't. Right. And I think it was Richard Saul Woman who's the founder of um, TED saying, mm, yes. being dumb allow you to be innocent mm -hmm. and, and allow you to be curious. Mm. And I think I, I didn't summarize it that way, but it was this way because I never felt I was the smartest person in the room. I always felt somehow there's something missing. Right. Therefore, it drives me to be more curious. Mm. At the same time, it also gives me more empathy to the people right. that I'm leading. Mm. And um, I was also quite open to share that experience. Mm. Um, I heard actually today from, uh, what's her name, Karen, she said, do you want to, no, it wasn't Karen, it was the governor. She said, uh, do you want to show the world that you Tan didn't know? Yes. Yeah, you don't want to know, you don't want to show the world. Mm. And that was an interesting perspective because I was once at GE, I heard Jack, Jack uh, Welch, Jack, uh, mm -hmm. not Jack Welch, mm -hmm. Welch, it's the current uh, Jack Emails. Jack Emails. Mm -hmm. He said something interesting. He said that when I wake up in the, mm -hmm. in the morning, I go into the world, I feel like I'm on top of the world, right. I, I know everything. And then in the evening, when I go home, only in my room, I tell myself I don't know everything. Mm. And I asked him, uh, in the meeting, I asked him, what if um, being a woman or being somebody else who come in the room in the morning didn't feel I know everything? That's right. Would I, could I reveal that? Mm. Would you accept that? Mm. He thought about it and he said, nobody works for me feels that way. Right. And, and I felt that way. So in the break, many people came to me and said, mm. that was such a good question. They tell me that, I, and they said it was very telling that he says no more, no one work for him thinking feel that, that way, way, think yeah, that way, because that way. he thinks that way, mm -hmm. therefore people mimic yeah. his action. Yeah. And I did opposite, because when I, when I knew vulnerability is not a, a weakness, in my work, a lot of time I share my feelings mm. with the people that I lead. Yeah. Many times people come to tell me it was so great you share that because when you feel this way, we feel yeah. we have the permission mm. to feel that to way. To feel the same way. To feel the same way. Right. And when you, we know that you're struggling, we feel that we have the permission to struggle. And it's okay for us to it's struggle as exactly. well. Exactly. So that authenticity mm. was how I bound my people together. Mm. That authenticity is, is what allowed us to go through yes. some of the the ups and downs mm -hmm. over the years. You have managed to overcome a very um, big tragedy in your personal life, and you are now a very successful entrepreneur uh, as a business person right now. So I need to ask you, what else keeps you, keeps painful awake at night? What keeps me awake at That's night? That's right. Mm. What, what mm. other dreams do you have left? Well, at different stage of my life, I mm. have different um, dreams Ambitions. and yeah, I think my my philosophy in life has never been looking for a destiny. It's always it's always a journey. That's right. And when I talk to my daughter, I talk about a contribution, not success. Mm. So I, f I I tell her that if you wake up in the morning that you feel like you, you can uh, if if you come home in the evening you feel like you contributed something, mm. whether or not it's to yourself or to the people around you, or to the earth. It could be small, could be big. Mm. You know, you talk about that too. Yeah. If you can say yes to one every day, mm. then you should feel successful. That's correct. Because I don't really know what success means. There's mm. always someone have bigger house than mm. you, make more money than you, you know, Precisely. got more award than you. I don't know what that means. But contribution is measurable. Mm. And contribution, accumulative contribution right. is what's measurable. How has um, uh, the fact that you are um, an Asian woman mm -hmm. um, been very helpful for you in the uh, business world? Being an Asian woman, being mm -hmm. helpful? Mm -hmm. Because I now you operate, I think, 85% in a world where, where uh, people at your level right now are mostly 
uh, males. Mm -hmm. How can I say that right mm -hmm. now? Yes. So you stand out like a very uh, beautiful, uh, um, bright light, shining ray of hope. How, how, how does, has that been advantageous to you? The fact that you're a woman and you're an Asian woman at that. I, I think being, um, I think being Asian, I, I'm, I'm not really think about me as 100% Asian because I live in America longer than I lived in China already. All right. And then also my previous marriage, I married to European. Mm. So I kind of think of myself as a global citizen. Okay. And my definition of global citizen is global citizen eat local food in seasons. That's interesting. Right. So well, how, the, how does the fact that you're a woman been very uh, helpful to you running the business? I, I think being a, um, I think if I'm a man, I'd probably be successful, I mean, s similar, have, I think being a woman maybe because a woman, um, like what we have heard today, mm -hmm. women tend to have a different tenant, mm, uh, different, exactly. different feeling, and, and then being a mother instincts is mm. part of the success fa factor. In 21st century leadership, seem, uh, the quality seem to change a bit from the 20th century, which right. is more of a command control, now it's more mm. of a trust and track mm. Mm. kind mm. of mm. Uh, approach. And I, th I think a lot of things that woman has in terms of being inclusive, community, right. uh, multitasking. Mm. Uh, I also think women are more resilient in general. Exactly. Uh, are the quality that rising up to be the quality that we want mm. in women. Mm. And for me, I didn't, when I'm in the business, I don't really think of me as a man or woman, but I do think me rising up to the top have a lot to do mm. with there's not enough women mm. out there doing what I'm doing. Exactly. So I get selected to That's do right. that no. a lot. Mm. Yeah. How, how do you see the shift taking place right now um, um, in terms of um, uh, what people expect from their leader right now compared to what was expected from their leader 20, 25 years ago when you first started? I think 20, 25 years ago, we tend to measure leader more on skills. Mm -hmm. And today, we tend to measure leader more on their value mm. and their action that reflects to their value. That's right. I think today, we follow the leader if we believe in their value. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I like to say today, it goes with what, why, what, and how in that order. Mm. It starts with why, which is mm. your purpose and value. And then what is the clarity, right? It's understanding preceding mm, action mm. and how is the action itself. Yes. So it's in that order. I think 20, 25 years ago, we start more on the what and how. Mm -hmm. The why is less clear. And right. today, if your why is not clear, mm -hmm. people less likely will follow you. It takes a lot from a person to, um, to run a team successfully, to manage people, to run the family, to run the business requirements. Where do you find your stamina? That's a good question. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I, I, sometimes I like to say I have a higher signal to noise ratio because mm -hmm. in general my life is big chaos. Right. There's a lot of noise. Okay. And I think more of what not to do than what to do mm -hmm. because there's so much to do. Right. And so in the morning, every morning when I get up, I think about what two things I do would make today an interesting day. Mm, mm. An interesting day for me, for family, for community, whatever. And what two things I don't do today, which would allow me to do the other two better. So I, I in the morning when I drive to work, mm -hmm. that's what comes mm -hmm. through my mind. It's mm. some people call it prioritizing. Right. And I think I prioritize them by value and purpose, not prioritize mm -hmm. them by just action list. I don't have a checklist to say, I did, did this and then I feel good. Um, and then for every week or every month, I, I, a lot of time I like to think quite big long term what I want to do. And then I wanted to align my daily right. towards that direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So understanding where you want to go and what is your purpose and then how, how, do you, how is your everyday life matching up to that journey is a, is a thought process I go through. In, in, in the quietest of moments, even the greatest of leaders sometimes need a bit of help yeah. uh, in terms of 
um, I, I, somebody told me recently that you know it's, it's lonely at the top well it's even lonelier now because of the environment that we are you know working in right now where who do you go to to get inspiration so Chani says this word like mm -hmm. if you work with three people one of it is your teacher so my inspiration generally does not come from a great leader that everybody admires right. generally it come from friends that I deal with every day and and I do have a set of friends that I talk to mm -hmm. quite, uh, quite often. We take a walk. And I get my inspiration through that quiet conversation mm -hmm. that, that we can go very authentic and very deep into either the joy we share or the sorrows that we share. All right. Do you have a quiet conversation with yourself? How often do you do that? I do. I'm an introvert. I have <laughs> quiet conversation with myself all the time. That's what I thought. Yeah. And when, which part of the day does that happen? Or oh, it happens any time? For me, it usually happens after midnight. Hmm. That's when I really can quiet down and, and then feel like I can have a conversation with myself. In the morning, I tend to think outwards. And it's after the day is gone, mm -hmm. and then I start to think inwardly. So what are some of the um, great things we're going to expect from you in the future? Great things. What's next? Uh, well, one of the things that I've been doing, I, 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 two years ago, I met this Indian person at one of the conference. He reads hand. And he, he reads my hand, and he tells me that I will be a teacher after 55, so I'm 55 this year. Okay. And and I thought about it. At, at the time, I said, no, no, no I'm not going to be a teacher. And he says, no, you're going to be a teacher. And I thought about it. I think I'm more of a midwife rather than a teacher mm -hmm. because I really enjoy give birth to some great ideas and then and see it growing into right. a real person. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be me, like a midwife sure. is delivering something from somebody else. When I was young, it's more of me being successful. And then you have a family, you take care of your family, mm -hmm. then you have a company. You take up employees and stakeholders, and now I get involved even bigger on uh, things like ad advise the president or policy mm -hmm. changes. I think at every stage of life, your influence is bigger right. and your impact is bigger. So my next stage is probably to see, I wanted to s see some of the ideas that I have and to see other people to be um, to be able to enjoy their life journey, however I can achieve that. And that will be a new measure of success, I suppose. That's right, yeah. Bing Fu, thank you for spending time with us. Well, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, this is Sabri from the Eclipse Leadership and Governance Center, The Leaders Room. <laughs>